We've made it to Friday, May 20th, and this is now on h and So there's this new survey that reveals the 2020 census miscounted Hawaii. We're standing at an inflection point in history. President Biden makes his first trip to Asia since taking office. I'm Natalie Brand at the White House with a look at the president's goals for the trip, plus the possible threat from North Korea. Our job is to fight and win, period. Today, we'll take you aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln as China flexes its military muscles in the Asia Pacific. We got all these stories, plus how long are these humid conditions literally gonna stick around? Guys got the weekend weather outlook coming up on This Is Now. You're having a good Aloha Friday. Thanks for joining us in the H&N Digital Center. You got Mahea in for Ashley today. I want to start with this. President Biden has arrived in Asia for meetings with new leaders in South Korea and Japan. National security interests highlight the president's trip, but the economy will also be a major talking point. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. President Biden arrived in South Korea for his first trip to Asia since taking office. The administration has said focusing on the Indo-Pacific region and countering China's influence is a key foreign policy priority. So much of the future of the world is going to be written here in the Indo-Pacific over the next several decades. President Biden is meeting with South Korea's new president before heading to Japan for his first face-to-face -face meeting with their new prime minister. Both new leaders campaigned on strengthening ties with America. It's actually been a long time since an American president made their first trip to the region and had both the Japanese and Korean leaders so positive and forthcoming about cooperating with the U.S. and with each other. President Biden's trip to the region comes as U.S. intelligence indicates there is a very real risk that North Korea could test another ballistic or nuclear weapon. We are preparing for all contingencies, including the possibility uh, that such a provocation would occur while we are in Korea or in Japan. We are coordinating closely with our allies in both Korea and Japan on this. The president is also stressing economic cooperation during a visit to a semiconductor plant. The ongoing shortage of microchips is one factor that's driving global inflation. We spotlighted the need to secure our critical supply chains so that our economy, our economic and our national security are not dependent on countries that don't share our values. Samsung announced it will build a similar plant near Austin, Texas, hoping to begin production in 2024. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. An attempted murder investigation has been opened in Mo'ili'ili as a spike in violent crime continues on Oahu. Here's what we know so far. Police say someone shot at a 41-year-old male after an argument. We're told the victim was not hurt. Police put up crime tape in a large area at the parking lot of Long's Drugs on South King Street. And a heavy police presence was on scene at around 4 this morning. But those crews have left and the tape has been taken down. We're told the suspect fled the scene. We've got this important update for you. HPD has identified the suspect in Wednesday night's fatal shooting on Kapi'olani Boulevard. Keahi Tucker has those details. Honolulu police have arrested a man accused of a deadly shooting at a gambling operation on the edge of Waikiki. Multiple police sources tell us the murder suspect is 25-year-old Kavika Kanaka Nui. Family members identified the victim as 33-year-old Bryson Okada. He was shot in the back of the head. Sources tell us earlier in the night the gunman got into a fist fight with one of Okada's friends inside an illegal game room right behind the convention center. A white car pulled up and two guys got out and um, they had some guys spotting, you know, standing around spotting, you know, see if any cops come. And they went in the game room and uh, one guy came out with a gun and the other guy came out running right after him. Sources tell us it's unclear if Okada 
was the gunman's intended target. Back in the red, Honolulu and Maui counties have joined Kauai in the CDC's high-risk category for COVID infections. Oahu is now averaging 653 new cases a day. Maui County is at 101. Kauai is at 63. The CDC designation means masking is recommended indoors, but so far the state does not plan to reinstate the mask mandate, although they are required indoors at public schools through the summer. COVID-19 cases are on the rise in most states across the U.S. Now, the White House's COVID-19 response coordinator says he believes that most cases in the U.S. are being substantially undercounted. We're crossing that 100,000 threshold, and I'm convinced we are substantially undercounting the number of infections out there because of home tests. So we have a lot of infections. It's continuing to rise, and, and I expect that that number will continue to rise in the days and weeks ahead. The 2020 census counted too many Hawaii residents, which means our state could get more than its fair share of federal funding over the next decade. A follow-up survey by the U.S. Census Bureau shows we were the most overcounted state at 6.8%. The next highest was Delaware at 5.5%. Local economists think that people staying in their vacation homes for the pandemic were counted here, as well as students who were in Hawaii for spring break. Other states were undercounted, like Florida and Texas, and that appears to have cost them congressional seats. Homelessness remains a major problem here on Oahu. Billy V has new numbers on just how many people are living on the streets. Thank you very much. We're here in Mo'ili'ili. This is just one of the neighborhoods here on the island of Oahu where there are homeless encampments, uh, whether it be the park nearby, uh, back around some of the back streets here by the University of Hawaii, Manoa Lower Campus. Uh, and there has been a count that has been done. This is the 2022 point in time count. We've gotten the results of this. Back in March, volunteers counted just under 4,000 people experiencing homelessness. That's a drop of 11% from 2020, which was the last year that the count was held. Of the 4,000 people homeless, 60% were living on the streets and 40% were staying in some sort of a temporary shelter. So when it comes to people living on the streets, which areas of Oahu have seen the highest numbers? Well, take a look at this map. You can see that 26% of them are staying in downtown Honolulu, Kalihi, and Nu'uanu or the surrounding areas. Second on the list, East Honolulu accounts for about 24,000 of the island unsheltered homeless population. Again, nearly 4,000 individual residents that are houseless or homeless. It continues to be a concern not only here on the island of Oahu, but across the state of Hawaii. From Mo'ili'ili, I'm Billy V. Back to more with This Is Now. A man found with a fatal gunshot wound on Kailua Beach has been identified as former state director of public safety Nolan Espinda. First responders tried to revive him but were unsuccessful. Our sources tell us police do not suspect foul play. Espinda headed the department for six years, but he spent nearly 40 years at Hawaii's prisons, serving as warden at numerous facilities, including Halava and OCCC. His tenure was marked by controversy. At his 2015 confirmation hearings, critics sounded off on his leadership style, but Governor Ige stuck by him until he retired in 2020. The Department of Public Safety notified employees of his death and offered counseling. Espinda leaves behind a wife and three children. He was 65 years old. The aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln, has maintained a presence in the Indo-Pacific. It's a visual show of force in the region meant to keep an eye on China's growing military presence and also to deter nuclear-armed North Korea. Blake Essig has more on the story. If you ask United States 7th Fleet Commander Carl Thomas, this is what deterrence looks and sounds like. Deterrence to date has worked, uh, and I, I'm hopeful that it continues to work, but my job is to be prepared in case it doesn't. For the past several months, the U.S. Navy Carrier Strike Group 3, led by the USS Abraham Lincoln, and armed with the U.S. Navy's most advanced fighter wing, has conducted joint drills with allies like Japan and patrolled the waters of the Indo-Pacific. 
being out here operating as a very visible and very agile uh, dynamic force, uh, there's no better way to provide the deterrence that we need in this part of the region. This aircraft carrier brings massive firepower to the region. Its purpose to project power, increase security, and serve as a deterrent to countries like China, North Korea, and Russia. But in a part of the world seemingly more unstable by the day, the effectiveness of a carrier strike group like this as a deterrence to adversaries has been called into question. We need to have a more robust, uh, like-minded states coalition. Uh, because uh, China's rise is now the global phenomenon. A reality that isn't lost on quad member states, a coalition made up of the United States, Japan, Australia, and India, whose leaders are set to meet in Tokyo early next week. With South Korea watching from the sidelines, member states are likely to discuss a unified response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The recent flurry of weapons tests conducted by North Korea and of course, China. One of the things that China doesn't have is friends and allies. They have subjects. We have friends and allies who want to stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States. While the Quad isn't a NATO-like mutual defense commitment, continuing to upgrade security cooperation between Quad member states and other like-minded nations in this region is extremely important to maintaining maritime security. But according to Cleo Pascal, an Indo-Pacific strategic specialist, the key to combating China's rise isn't necessarily through military strength. By the time you get to the military part, you're almost too late. You, you don't want to cut off China militarily. You want to block its influence politically and economically first. However, as China and Russia work to strengthen their own military alliance in the region, Rear Admiral J.T. Anderson says the U.S.'s presence, along with the strength of its allies, has proven to be an effective deterrent. Nevertheless, if that deterrent fails... Our job is to fight and win, period. An outcome no one wants, but one the U.S. military and its allies must prepare for. Blake Essig, CNN on board the USS Abraham Lincoln in the Philippine Sea. Thanks, Blake, for that report. All right, want to switch gears now to weather and talk about the air that you wear. It has been <laughs> so humid out there. I went to Ala Moana Beach Park last night and was just sweating buckets. Let's see how long that's going to last. Here's Guy Hockey. Look for more of those pop-up showers with the available moisture and the light winds, and it is going to be humid. But by tomorrow morning, only Kauai is going to get the rain. The rain will have cleared most of the state, and from there on, from Saturday morning on, we're being for some beautiful, mostly dry trade wind conditions. So it's going to be much more comfortable. So here's your seven-day forecast. A little damp for Kauai and Oahu today, and then afternoon showers for everybody else, and those trade winds. Lower the humidity levels. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, but we got to get through the sticky, wet conditions today first. Well, Harry Styles' highly anticipated new album has been released. Danya Bacchus has more on that and other entertainment headlines. Harry Styles' third studio album is here. The highly anticipated Harry's House was released today. The first single from the album, As It Was, spent three weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. Singer Rihanna and her boyfriend ASAP Rocky have welcomed their first baby. According to People Magazine, the baby boy was born in Los Angeles and both baby and mom are doing well. To celebrate the seventh season of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, the cast took to the streets of New York City. They revealed exclusive Saks Fifth Avenue window displays inspired by them. They also gave a sneak peek at what to expect this season. There is, is such an incredibly strong pool of talent. So I knew coming into this competition right off the bat that I had to bring my best and my brightest. And I know that the rest of the competitors did that as well. So I'm really excited for you guys to all see what we bring. RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 7 premieres today on Paramount+. Plus. And Winona Judd is keeping the Judd's tour going after the sudden death of her mother and musical partner Naomi Judd. Country music stars Faith Hill, Trisha Yearwood, Brandi Carlisle, and Little Big Town, along with others, will join the tour. That's your Iowan Entertainment. Donya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, let's see what else the interweb and cyberspace is talking about today. And this is a strange one, Mejia. Check this out. All right, so there's this new collaboration 
based on the idea that cheese can taste better if you age it with hip-hop. Yep, <laughs> I said that right. Yeah. Cheez-Its, Crackers, and the streaming service Pandora are teaming up for this one. So this is what they're doing. They're calling it the first ever sonically aged cheese snack. It is a limited edi- edition by Cheez-Its and Pandora again. And the cheese is, this is what they did. So listen to this. For six and a half months, they put the cheese in a room with hip-hop tunes playing and pumping. It's a study from Switzerland is also connected to this. And it found that aging cheese with hip-hop music can potentially (laughs) strengthen the taste and smell. I don't know if I believe uh, that, but it's worth a shot. I love Cheez-Its. Maybe it's the vibration or something. Yeah, it could be something. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I'll try anything these days. What'd well, you- Coke bottle caps in the United Kingdom will soon be a little different than in other parts of the world. The British arm of Coca-Cola announced it started rolling out new versions of its plastic bottle caps. Now, the new caps won't come off. Instead, they'll be tethered to the bottle. The beverage company says by early 2024, Coke, Coke Zero, Sugar, Coke Zero Sugar, Diet Coke, Fanta, Sprite, and Dr. Pepper will all eventually have the attached cap. The design is supposed to make it easier to recycle the whole package at once and keep bottle caps out of the trash and off the ground. So far, the new caps are only for the UK and not the United States. I love this idea, especially when you see how much plastic ocean waste we see. I mean... At least keeping those caps attached would cut down on some of that clutter. Absolutely. You don't want the birds to eat it either. No, no, no. Well, streaming service Hulu is hoping to lure new and returning customers with a special promotion. Beginning Friday, Hulu is offering its ad-supported streaming plan for $1 per month for three months. Now, after three months, it goes to the regular price of $6.99 a month. The deal is being offered through next Friday, May 27th. Hulu had more than 45 million paying customers as of April 2nd, up 10% from the year before. But Hulu only gained 300 thousand customers in the quarter have you seen have you ever seen how many ads are on that ad supported hulu (laughs) though i mean it really tempts you to pay the little extra it sure does but i don't know i i'm okay with the ads just to get it free yeah one dollar can't beat that price all right so there's this clam caper i said it right clam caper on uh manoa that is solved and that is our good news now sammy selena has the story mystery lurks in Edmondson Hall. We didn't think anyone had taken it because it was who would take a giant clam shell from a teaching lab. The iconic clam. It weighs 43.4 pounds. With two shells, that's about 100 pounds disappearing from its lab shelf. The clam was probably 40, 50 years old when it was collected. It's been at UH for at least that long. Stolen from the biology building. This was one of the specimens that was on display for us. Yeah, a retired emeritus faculty member said he couldn't believe how shellfish the thieves were to take it. (laughs) Like, it's not funny. (laughs) Aw, shucks. There'd been a lot of thefts in the building. We noticed it was gone a couple weeks ago, but so many of us use it. We had just done a big lab cleanup at the end of the semester, and we suddenly realized it wasn't where it used to be, and none of us had moved it. And so we called campus security. I, I wondered how it would sound when I called it's public safety to tell them that we lost the clam. The first thing is, why would anybody steal that? So they valued it at around $7,000. It's a calamity. HPD showed up and they took another report and they took it very seriously. I think when you call the police and say a very valuable clam has been stolen, uh, you kind of think, this sounds ridiculous. And it does. Yeah, I never thought we'd see it again. And then a day later, A pearl-thicked ending. We were all amazed. We sort of couldn't believe it. That's a very short time frame. We already have it back, so that's incredible. (laughs) HPD and UH Department of Public Safety worked together to bring it back. They did say that it was found with a bunch of keys, and there have been a lot of thefts in the buildings. Unfortunately, staff and students still don't know the whole story because the case is still under investigation, but they're just happy that the clam is back. They'll be able to use it and observe it and then help them to learn and grow. So I'm happy that it's home. All right, here we go. About as happy as a clam. Oh, heavy. Sammy Solita. All right here. Hawaii News Now. What a great story and good <laughs> to have a happy ending that it's back. 
Absolutely. Well, it's Endangered Species Day, and here's a heartwarming story for you. A four-month-old endangered panther kitten is now back with its mother. It is the moment. This is the moment they were reunited. It all started after someone dropped off the kitten to wildlife officials in Florida. Now, they thought it was abandoned. Experts really wanted to try and find the mom, so they reunited the kitten scent. So they spread the kitten scent around a mile radius of where it was Mm. found. When they didn't have any luck with that, they set the kitten outside in a cage at night, and it eventually worked. On the third night, Mama eventually showed up. There she is. There she is. Those eyes in this night camera, Mm -hmm. though. Well, spooky. All right, guys, this is going to be, well, expected to be an absolutely huge, huge year for the wedding industry. We're already seeing it come back to here on the islands. Naomi Ruckham takes a closer look at that. I literally got like four words in and started choking up. Jesse White and Lisa Van Lu got engaged last fall. And when they started looking at wedding dates and venues, they quickly realized they'd have to move fast. The owners were saying, okay, this this date's now gone, this date's now gone. And so it almost, I was getting anxious. Lisa and Jesse chose September in California's wine country to celebrate their big day, which will be one of about two and a half million weddings in the U.S. this year. According to the National Trade Group, The Wedding Report, the number of couples tying the knot is up about 30% from 2021, the most in nearly four decades. I call it controlled chaos. Wedding planner Joanne Grigoli says it's all due to a mixture of pandemic engagements and COVID postponed nuptials. I've never seen this many people who are in need of wedding dates, wedding planners, wedding vendors. It's, it's totally, it's crazy. Popular venues like New York City's Tavern on the Green are booking up fast. Couples won't find a Saturday night open here for the rest of the year, and only a handful are available for 2023. We'll talk to them about Friday night or Sunday or even a weekday, like a Thursday night, and see if that's even possible for them. Flexibility may also help couples with sticker shock and supply chain snacks. Food costs are going up. Labor costs are going up. Event material. We can't get glass vases. Flowers are in short supply. Champagne is in short supply. For Lisa and Jesse, expecting the unexpected has been an early marriage mantra. For us to be able to come out of a pandemic and be getting married is really exciting. Ending one chapter and beginning a new one together. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Yeah, I was walking through the Ely Kai uh, Resort Hotel the other day, going to a restaurant there, and I noticed one of those wedding shops Mm -hmm. where people come and travel to Oahu and sort of set up a stage a wedding with all the dresses. You can pick what you want. You have a photography session. was all set up and back open. So wow. the industry is returning. Very busy, but booking is another challenge. Yeah, you know what? I was looking at hotels this weekend. $600 to Ooh. stay at Turtle Bay. Wow. Yeah, for this weekend. Sticker shop. Yep. Let's take it to a live picture real quickly coming to us from Washington, D.C. There's a national effort to mobilize Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the upcoming midterm elections. This AAPI victory celebration comes on the one-year anniversary of the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act being signed into law. Now, that legislation was co-authored by Senator Maisie Hirono and aimed to combat the rise in violence against Asian Americans. Organizers say AAPI voters came out in record numbers in 2020 and that momentum needs to be carried out into this November. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris and local actors Ali Kravala and Daniel Day Kim are among the scheduled speakers. Very cool. Looks like it's just getting underway now. We'll try to get that up as a separate stream on your H&N digital platforms, at least on Facebook. All right, guys, that's going to do it for your Aloha Friday edition of This Is Now. Mejia is going to fill in for Ashley on First at Four on KHNL. Get your updates there. Have a good one.